Welcome back, everybody, once again here to the basement in State College. Joining us today in studio is Brian Walker from A Day Without Love. Hey, how's it going? What's going on, Brian? Um, doing well. Got off the Greyhound. Got some poke or pokey. Pokey bull. Yeah. Yeah, those are good. Sent some mail, and now I'm here. Nice. So um, you're here joining us today with Marcelin, who has also had a basement session with us and you can check that out um on our youtube page um or there'll, facebook there'll be a link up top yeah top, there'll be a link up top, up top right, right up here yeah <laughs> up there oh, yeah hopefully we can get that figured out because i'm still trying to figure I out got how it. To do all right no, cool take care of it. It'll yeah be there. yeah so uh joining us today also is marcelin and you two are mentioning this before um about a tour that yeah. you two have booked in the works um yeah. i'm not sure how much information you guys can tell us right now but <laughs> Um, as far as like major stops, I don't know if that's a possibility or people who may be on it with you. It, well, in terms of touring, it would just be the two of us. Okay. Um, local acts. I'll probably be like some acts that like the both of us know. Nice. And, we haven't uh, really booked anything yet. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. We'll keep you updated. Awesome. <laughs> well, I'm excited to hear that. Um, and if people want to know about, and I'm sure they will, if they want to know about those booking dates um, and whenever the tour is released, they can go to uh, a day without love.com. That's right. All right. Click so, on that tour tab. And uh, there you have it. So you can go ahead and click on that tour tab on uh, daywithoutlove.com and you can see that for yourself. Uh, I keep those events see. updated. Please do. So many people don't. And it's like, I don't know where to go to see this person. Yeah. So. <laughs> and like, I feel like sometimes musicians think like, oh, no one's looking at it. But people are looking. Oh, yeah. People are looking. You'll meet people and be like, yo, man, I've been following following your shows to see when you were playing near my town and now you're here and it's like whoa right (laughs) that those two biggest things is like when people know where you're gonna be before you even know and it's like wow and when people know your lyrics and sing them with you those are like the two the two things that's validation yeah it really is who cares about the selfie i will i will say this though i take a lot of selfies whenever i'm playing or going to see a show i I can take it all the time i totally just contradicted myself (laughs) (laughs) Now, you have, like, Instagrams and stuff like that, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, so people can go ahead and look those up, too, I'm sure. Totally. I mean, I definitely have some Instagrams where I'm just being an absolute goofball. (laughs) Yo, me, too. Yeah. Me, too. Gotta have fun with it. Marceline, do you have an Instagram? You do, right? I do. Yeah, Yeah. you do. Marceline the The Human. human. Marceline the Human. That's right. You followed followed our Instagram. Yeah. 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 Uh, I try and keep all these Instagram names in line. It just doesn't work out for me. I'm, I'm terrible with it. That's why we need a social media person, so... Anyways, right. uh, yeah, that's another that's another point completely. I feel you. Yeah. So um, Brian here is going to play some songs. Yep. And I'm sure you have them picked out already. I do. Awesome. Uh, we're really excited to hear those songs. Um, and I think I've been on this kick recently where I just let them take it away and perform the first song right away. And then mm-hmm. we start talking about it. And I think I'm going to keep with that. Cool. So I want to go ahead and hand it over to you. Um, go ahead and perform this first song. Tell us what it's called. And uh, I will sit here waiting in anticipation. The song is called Birthday and it's on my upcoming record, Diary. It's like being born 
All right. Woo! Starting the DIY Collaborative in Philadelphia Songwriters Club at Penn State here at Penn State. That's really cool um, to Thank know you. that we have one of the OG music scene members here <laughs> yeah. at the basement. It's really cool. Um, but even cooler, and I'm really excited, is your next song. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to you. Nice transition, bro. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> I'm getting better at this. <laughs> Take it away, man. Okay. What do you want from me, baby? And why is everything crazy? You trap me in your expectations. I guess that's why there's hate. Why are you so angry? Do you ever want to be happy? I think you're miserable. I think you're cynical. And that's why we won't relate. I won't understand. Mother pays your bills And daddy buys your makeup But you paint your lips black What is up with that? And you say that you're lonely But you have a all of it is fake I don't understand You're the child of Republicans You hate to be an American but you don't have any black friends No, you don't have any black friends Let's talk about your justice Cause you never had injustice Your sense of equality Is as blind as your money A Day Without Love here at the basement. That is a great song. Thank That's you. That's my favorite. Um, yeah. That, <laughs> very powerful, too. Lots Thank of, you. Lots of controversial sus, um, subjects happening all at once yeah. through your writing. The song's called Nonsense. It's uh, coming out next year. I was just about to ask if that song had a uh, had a name or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know it's not a normal practice for a song not to have a name, but sometimes you do have that. Sure. Man. sure. But um, yeah, definitely a cool song. Um, the uh, the writing behind that, and uh, I do ask these questions sometimes because it's nice. But it, like, if it's a touchy subject, then I totally understand. But the writing behind that is there. Is there a story that goes behind this song? Oh, I totally. Can, so, yeah. would you be okay with sharing that with us? Like each line is about like different people in my life. We definitely don't have time for that. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> no worries. The song was inspired by uh, this time where I went to go see this. Uh, she's no longer my friend, but this girl that I like, I was sort of interested in, but like we were friends and like when we had so many conversations about like social justice, equality, feminism, et cetera, et cetera. And I just like, we opened up to each other and like, I met some of her friends out like in Western Pennsylvania, like in the suburb of Pittsburgh. And like when I met her friends, her friends were like, Oh, you're the black friend that like so-and-so is talking about. And then like, it honestly hurt. Like, not even like in a painful way, but more of like a, like everything that you just said about yourself just went way out the window. You know, like I thought that they were just like not real, like they were a hypocrite. And um, pretty much when the night was over, I, I asked her like, am I your first black friend? 
That's where the you don't have any black friends thing. Yeah. And she just blushed. And I was like, oh, my God, you're you're serious. And I was like, that's not cool that you said that about me, like to your friends, because like they called me gangster Brian. And I mean, uh, for those that are listening, like there, there's nothing gangster about the inflection of my voice. Like, I'm not talking like, yo, we up in the trap, son, hanging out with your boy in the basement. Like, that's not how I talk. Like, you know? Yeah. And, and I know there's uh, like a, there's like a comedic thing element to that, but it's really not funny. No. Uh, and, and to, you know, to stereotype somebody on that just based on their skin color is. And the things easy. that I've got, gone through. And I just, I mean, I, and I would realize that like a bigger part of like things that happen in the DIY scenes, things that happen in my personal life, like, there's a lot of people that advocate equality or advocate feminism, advocate insert activist belief here, mm -hmm. but they don't practice what they preach. It's like I, I am a religious person. I know it, like we talked about that, but um, whether you're an atheist, whether you're an agnostic, whether you're a, a Republican, whether you're a Democrat, just be who you say you are, you know, yeah. and stick to that. Don't say, well, people are hashtagging bacon is good. Time to not be a vegan. Like, just don't. <laughs> like, 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 if you want to be a vegan, be the best <laughs> vegan you can be. You know, I might get slack for that. But like, seriously, like, honestly, no, I don't. I don't think you will. These are your thoughts. Man, I just you know? don't think. Like, I mean, maybe it's just young people being young people. But like, just be fucking who you are, and that's all you can do. Yeah, like, I'll. I'll be honest with you. I've seen this trend lately, especially on the college campus here, and it's like, look. Don't do something and don't believe in something because you think it's cool or because all of your friends yeah. are believing mm -hmm. it and doing it and thinking it and saying it. Do something because you know it's right. Yeah. And that's what it, and I'll tell you, it's the people that are out there that are the most vocal. Like I support this and this and I do this and this. They're the ones that will that don't really believe in that sort of thing. Or not doing anything. Yeah. yeah. Or not doing anything. They expect everyone else to do something, yeah. but they won't do something themselves. Like, for example, I, I'll be the first to admit, like, I have definitely gone to protests like before Trump's campaign and during the campaign. But I don't like going to them because I know the reality is when shit hits the fan, I might be the first one getting shot. I know that sounds scary, but it's valid. You no, know it's yeah. Really true. And I've thought that before the whole Black Lives Matter thing, you know. Um, so my sense of activism is writing words in these songs and talking in spaces and bars and, and creative spaces. Absolutely. And, and writing about that. But like, I guess what I'm just like, like you just said, like, be who you are and do it the way you want to do it, not do it the way the media tells you to do it or yeah. the people like. You know? Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that were, well, we'll put it this way because I don't want to get too sensitive with it. But um, they they say that, you know, we have to well, we'll take the music scene, for example, the music mm -hmm. scene here um, is great. It's it's thriving. I think I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of activism happening uh, as far as being inclusive uh, mm -hmm. for what kind of um, events that we book and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as being, you know, gen almost gender neutral with the shows that we book, trying True. to book, you know, and, and it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, you come and you play and. Uh, I think they're doing a very good job at booking male acts, female acts, um, LGBT acts, uh, pretty that much warms anything. My heart. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that that's happening here is great. However, there is a segment of you know the music scene around here that is almost shit talking cisgendered white males, and, and that's not okay. Yeah, that's kind of where I draw the line because uh, you end up it's an endless circle. Exactly. You know, and when it comes down to it, you know, there's there's a there's a few people that when they look at me and um, what I'm doing here, I'd, I'd like to think that I'm being pretty inclusive with what I do. I yeah. sure. yeah. I um, actively book a male act, then a female act, then a male act, then a female sure. act on purpose. I do that for sure. a reason. And, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where that's my way of of trying to, you know, be inclusive. True. But when, you know, people ask me, I, it, this has only happened once, but when people ask me like, Hey, you know, um, do you X, Y, Z, do you ABC, whatever it is. And mm -hmm. I say no, um, automatically, you know, they start coming on, on to me. Like, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? You need to do this. You need to do that. And it's like, no, first of all, I'm going to do what I think is there. If you have a suggestion or if you think I can improve on something, tell me, 
Mm-hmm. And if I believe what you're saying is the right thing or not, then I'll go forth and do that. But and ultimately, it's like it's your platform. Like mm-hmm. it's up to you to decide. And, and the fact that you're advocating inclusiveness is uh, or inclusivity. I don't know what Webster says. <laughs> <laughs> um, Got me, man. I have yeah. no idea. <laughs> um, is a good thing. Because like one of the problems that I wrote when I did like my own like self-critique of the Songwriters Club um, more so first year going the second year, but even leaving was uh, there weren't enough girls in the club. And the thing is, uh, I was like, I know there's some some women here singing and there were no black women in the club. And I was like, sister, sister, I know you there. <laughs> you know, there's not that many black women in the Philly music scene either, you know. And I think the Philly problem is much different than the Penn State problem. And I, I really like seeing people like Marceline playing at Penn State. Because, oh, me too. Me too. Um, <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> my, our vice president, she was a she was a musician, um, and she doesn't sing anymore. But I think that didn't really have so much to do with her gender. She had a religious experience, and, like, she's just singing again. Like, keep in mind, this is from 2010. So seven years later, she's just singing again. But she had this pre- belief that, like, singing is the devil's work. And I was like, that's so far from true. Have you ever heard of the choir? But oh my goodness. getting back to the topic, <laughs> like, uh, I'm there's so whole shook genres right now. of music that are yeah. religious. Like, <laughs> yeah. what the hell? And she was so, so good. <laughs> But almost every girl that was in the songwriters club had like some sort of identity crisis where they stopped. And I was like, is it because there's just too many dudes? Like, is it because that guy hit on her? And like, I would pull on the side, like, do you want to kick this guy out of the songwriters club? Because I know he like dated you for a bit. She's like, no, it's not that. I was like, you sure? Like, I would be like, I was like so big brother about it. And I knew it wasn't that. But I just wanted to like have it so like there is a 50 50 or they're just like people from different groups because like we definitely had the genre inclusivity like we had edm and rap this that, and third. yeah um we and, we and like we definitely could have improved on racial inclusivity but like gender inclusivity and, and music or just inclusivity of period like from an hr perspective that's my day job um <laughs> is hard to force for two reasons because there's one type of discrimination where you see that the minority sample is there and you are ignoring it. That's just outright discrimination. But then there's, I want to include these underrepresented people, but they're just not there. And, and you try to do flyers. You try to post on the internet. You try to reach out to friends of friends. And, and as much and, as you try, they just don't come out of the woodwork. And I don't think you or anyone else should be guilty for that. You know, mm. like, you know, a part of me wants to say that everybody should feel guilty because I think a part of it does have to do with some sort of social construct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, when it comes down to it, I think everybody should kind of take a deep look into that aspect and be like, what can I do to make that better for future generations? Sure. For sure. And I think it all starts That's the, where the helping the youth comes in. Yeah. And the know? bottom line starts with don't be racist. Don't be misogynist. <laughs> don't be yeah. an asshole. <laughs> like, yeah. And speak out about it. When exactly. Other people mm-hmm. it. And as long as people put forth just a small conscious effort to try and do something to be inclusive, I think we could see a vast improvement True. in the future True. as far as who comes in the music scene and does things and performs, yep. um, which is, you know, what it's all about. I there's think. so many textures, sounds and stories to be shared. That, oh, yeah. That don't get shared. So. Oh, yeah. Um, and even your stories like, uh, you know, just in your music so far, I, I haven't had anything like that here in the basement yet. And I think this is our, you know, sixth, seventh session, something like that. Something. Um, mm-hmm. Each of which, you know, have four songs, five songs, sometimes six. Um, you do the math. That's, you know, quite a bit of music that we haven't had any anything like what you're what you're playing. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. Excuse me. So it's it's cool to have um, somebody with a little bit of, uh, you know, a political reference or some sort of. Um, I don't want to say political, I don't want to say political at all, actually. It's more or less, um, controversial, that word again that I keep forgetting. Like the the controversial (laughs) elements. On like a funny note, um, the one line where it's like, uh, and daddy buys your makeup, but you paint your lips black. Like (laughs) I definitely have had girls who literally had black lipstick at the show I have black lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's expensive. Yeah. So oh, it, yeah. you're not kidding. Yeah. Brooke just went and bought some black lipstick the other weekend. And oh, this shit's like $23. Uh-oh. That's like, yeah. Yeah. And like, <laughs> girls have been like, do you not like the goth girls? I'm like, actually, <laughs> holla at your boy. I would swear <laughs> to day. It's a metaphor, you know? Because really, like, I thought it was catchy in a way of saying that, like, 
someone provides something for you, but you still don't see the positive side to it. Yeah. So I thought yeah. black lips was like the metaphor for that. So. Gotcha. Yeah. I personally think black lips are amazing and positive and wonderful. Like I said, holla at your boy. So. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just, I can't get enough of that saying. Because everybody, especially on campus and stuff, they say that. They're all like, holla at your boy. And I'm like, yo, come on. It's why? always like the whitest dude too. Yeah. Like the, the whitest dude in like, like workout oh. shorts and flip flops. Like it oh, really boy. is. Yeah. With the high changed. Nike socks. No, no, it hasn't. No. Yeah. Yeah, there's always like, oh, I guess we can kind of say this too. I'll, I'll end on this note until we go into your next song. Like the people that are always the ones that are the the perpetrators of, you know, screaming things that could be considered offensive or mm-hmm. uh, like saying something where it's like, OK, why would you say that? Most of the time it's because they just don't know any better. They yeah. don't think about what they're saying before mm-hmm. they say it. And it doesn't make it right. It doesn't mean that, you know, oh, it's they're ignorance. excused. It's mm-hmm. straight ignorance. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And Just that's, that's where I say sometimes, like, it's a lot healthier to do something about it in person than to go, cis white bro in tube socks did this thing to random person. I can't understand, like, because then exactly. you, you play yeah. the victim card and you don't allow recovery for that person who was targeted exactly and like and it's the people that'll sit there and say you know exactly what you just said they'll see something happen they'll sit there and tweet about it right then and there those are the kinds of people that i'm talking about those are the kinds of people where it's like you're not doing this because you actually believe it you're doing it because you want people to see you do it so that you you think you're you're cool and you feel good about yourself you feel good about yourself you're not doing it to help the victim yeah like i'll tell you to um two quick stories of like things i did that i did not share on social media but i shared amongst my peers you know the Burger King um, by University, um, by like the apartments, University... University Way? Terrace. Terrace, yeah. Um, I had a lot of friends that lived there when I was at Penn State. And I remember one time I went to go get a Whopper. This is terrible that I'm saying a Whopper as the start of this story because it's terrible. <laughs> and I saw this dude like veins out of his neck yelling at this girl. And like it didn't get physical, but that just didn't feel right with me. So before I got my Whopper... I literally got in the dude's face and started yelling at him. And I was like, you think that's cool? You think that's cool? Because he was saying that to her. Yeah. And then he like calmed down because I was like, I was taller than him. And I was just like, dude, I don't know what the relationship is between the two of you, but no one deserves to get yelled at like that. Yeah, no kidding. Nice. And then he apologized to her. And they Unless went their separate you're ways. in the service because they do yell well, at you. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> but they went their ser- separate ways. You yeah. Know? And I think that's the day to day thing that I think that like, men can stop toxic masculinity. Oh, absolutely. You know, sure. um, that's oh, the sort man. of thing <laughs> that I think people can do whenever harassment of any kinds o- occurred, you know? Because there's definitely times where I'm not going to lie because I thought I might get shot. I didn't do anything, you know? But more often than not, I do do something. Like one time I saw a girl um, by, uh, not McClanahan's, uh, it was one of the bars, like this while I was in college, she was getting punched at while I was on my way to get pizza with my friends and like I literally stopped dude and I was like yo what the fuck are you doing and she instantly called the cops as I was pulling him away and then he went to jail like you know so I guess what I'm saying is it's like a lot of times that bystander apathy like takes place Mm -hmm. and it's so easy to say I saw this happening or I gave a bagel to a homeless person aren't I a good person and it's like are you a good person or are you just a narcissist yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, so I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is like, don't make your platform of activism and being good a product of social media. Make it a product of your life. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, you know, I, I do what I can. Um, I don't preach it. People don't even know half the time the things that I do. Uh, and, and just they to don't have to. They don't have to. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so like, and that's that's the best part about it, which is, you know, I, I think that. The people that do view this and the people that do watch uh, this 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 session, um, if you take anything away, take away this. Do something because it's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, Just do something it. because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Words of wisdom. Yeah. Because <laughs> and it's weird because, you know, like, I, I don't know about you guys, but morality is subjective. So it's like, what is right? What is wrong? But um, you, you know. Yeah. You just know. And that's really all we can all we can do is kind of 
as not just as musicians, but as decent human beings. Exactly. So I completely agree. I, I there's something that I've been thinking this entire time is drawing that distinction between actual activism compared to like call out culture yeah. is like how I kind of think of it. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. actually go out there and do something rather than being passive and sort of just saying, okay, I'm going to say this. And then something on something's gonna happen. You know what I mean. And I think yeah. call out culture inadvertently creates a domino effect yeah. that dismisses the recovery of the victim or the defense of the person that committed the crime. Oh, for sure. Um, because like a lot of times people go to the worst and think great, but it's like people call out things about ramen noodles. You know, mm-hmm. like seriously, like I've seen it. <laughs> you know, and I think in in every justice system there's what one person said what the other person said and the truth and like like i just said earlier like you can't say that you're trying to recover if you're still playing the victim yeah and that's the problem with call out culture because it's a platform of people that say that they're here to recover victims and maintain safety while still playing the victim Mm -hmm. and those two things don't they don't mesh they don't mesh yeah so then you end end up getting this endless toxic culture and like in the four years that i've been touring seriously like I've seen people that call out as a part of their music platform, like other people, and guess what happens to them at the end of their career? They get called out themselves. Yeah. And they wonder how did that happen? Because you never took the break to like actually recover others or recover your own internal struggles. You didn't take the break or the time to say, Hey, maybe I should work on my own shit instead of worrying about other people's shit, you yeah. know? Um, so that, that's my whole perspective on call it culture. And like, I get the positive side to it because it's kind of almost saying like, fuck the system. Let's you, oops, let's <laughs> use the community to make the, be a court system. But like, you really got to stop to think like when someone gets hurt or when someone's experiencing something, like for example, um, I got robbed of $150 by like a previously famous photographer is it up to Joe B to call out that famous photographer on my behalf? No. We'll say he calls out the wrong photographer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that does happen then. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or then exaggerate the entire story to begin with just for flavor and SEO and clicks and CPC. Yeah. And oh, then God. makes an advertisement per campaign out of that. Like, cause there is a business that's made out of that now. Yeah. And like, for me, I just go, look, my recovery is praying for that girl and just hoping she goes, she lives her life, you know? Yeah. Um, the money's lost. I bounced back. Big Sean. Um, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> other people's coping mechanisms might be different. So, like, I guess, like, in some ways, like, call it culture, I think, is toxic. And, and it could just be very uh, vengeful, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a pure emotional yeah. lashback to whatever. True. And, and yeah. it's so contingent, so I can't really say. But, like, that's my general opinion on it. Yeah. Gotcha. So. Well, um, we're going to jump into the music and okay. kind of shy away from this. I don't mean to cut it off because no, it is totally a good discussion, but we are running out of time. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm going to play a short and another political song. Before you get into that, I do want to say this, that you guys are playing at the Hush Room directly after this session. Right. So yeah. that is why I am uh, in such a rush. Um, so I apologize to everybody who is enjoying this and wants it to keep going. But we got shit to do. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it right back over to you. Surely. Sounds good. Take it away. Look in my eyes. Can you see me? You say I matter, but you treat me like I'm dead. say you're included 
sin But no one looks like me He said you were open But your mind is closed like them Your love is a lie And so are all your friends Brian Walker with A Day Without Love here yeah. at the basement. Thank you so much for being here today. No problem. Um, we really enjoyed having you in. I Thank really you. enjoyed the discussions Thank that we had. Yeah. That was really cool. Probably some of the best discussion we've had in the session so I, yeah, far, I, I think. Yeah, definitely say so. Yeah. Thank you. Sweet. So I just hope that, uh, you know, all the things that we're doing here benefit you. Oh, totally. I mean, I love doing sessions on YouTube. <laughs> um, that, like, that they're not on YouTube, that is. Yeah. Uh, honestly... If I could do this, like, and not do shows, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I, Just I mean, feed me, like, food. <laughs> and we could talk about bacon. Eventually, like, I would like to do that, to be able to, like, buy pizza and bacon stuff. Bacon bits. I got bacon bits. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian, Marcelin, thank you guys so much for being for sure. here today. Yeah. You guys do have a show to get to, though. We do. Yes. Directly after this. Yes. So um, sure. I'm going to cut it short, I guess. And Okay. Uh, basically this is going to be the end. So thanks again for coming in. No really problem. appreciate it. Hopefully we see you guys at some point. Definitely. And with that, until next time. Definitely. Follow me on social media. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs>